Internal rate of return is a core component of capital budgeting and corporate finance. Businesses use it to determine which discount rate will make the present value of the after-tax cash flows equal to zero. And any uh, project that returns an IRR of greater than zero adds some value. Now, the IRR is subordinate in the decision-making process to the net present value, and this is because we prefer an absolute dollar amount that's higher compared to an IRR that's higher. But let's go into how we can calculate the IRR in Excel. So the first thing we have is an initial outlay, which is the cost to build the factory or whatever, and then an estimated set of after-tax future cash flows. Now there's an issue with garbage in, garbage out. If our estimates are wrong, that's gonna affect all of our calculations, but we are focusing on financial modeling best practices which means that all of our line items are separate and uh, distinct, distinguished, which means that if we need to change an assumption down the line, we can do so easily. What we're gonna do is we have to discount each cash flow by the weighted average cost of capital raised to the period. So if we hit F2, we can see that we are discounting the first cash flow by the WAC raised to period one. We're discounting the second cash flow by the WAC waste period two, so on and so forth. Now when we sum these present values and offset it by the initial outlay, we get the net present value of 472. Okay, that's all well and good. What does this 472 represent on a return basis? Here's where we use the IRR. Excel has two convenient formulas for this. The first one is the built-in IRR in which case we will type in equals IRR. It asks us as a prompt for values and then a guess. We do not need to include a guess. I, I honestly don't know why Excel even has that, but if you were inclined to guess, you could. And you can see that we get an IRR of 57. Now, what does this actually mean in practice? This means that if our weighted average cost of capital actually was 57, then that would make the NPV equal to zero and you can see how our model updates that automatically. And that's the nice thing about parting this model out line item by line item, is that we can play around with our assumptions and see what thresholds of WAC are required to have a profitable project. Now, 57% is so high of a return that we're never gonna see a cost of capital that high, but if we made up lower numbers, Now we can see that the IRR for this project is actually negative, which means that it is a value destroying project. We don't earn enough on our after tax cash flows to recover the initial outlay at this cost of capital. And further, because it's negative, we're never gonna have a negative cost of capital. So this would be a project that we would avoid. Now, one thing about this assumption, and this is a weak spot of IRR, is that it assumes that each subsequent period is reinvested at this rate. So if we jump back to when it was 57, that is an aggressive assumption. What is more conservative is to say that the subsequent returns can be invested in the risk-free rate, which is like a treasury. And for that, we're gonna use the modified IRR, which is still a very attractive 33% for this project. So we would use equals MIRR. It says, give us the values. So we select the values, including the initial outlay. Then it says, give us the financing rate which is our WAC, and we'll lock this in place. Oh, excuse me. We'll hit F4 to lock this, and then it says give us the reinvestment rate, which is our risk-free rate. We'll lock this, and now we can see that we get 33%. And that is how you build out and calculate the IRR in Excel.